Hmm. Ah, something's not right with the internet wizardry again. I don't think it's my fault this time for a change. And I think there's a start of a new stream. So once again, kind of a mess because uh, that's not what's supposed to happen. I am going to try and stop this and see if I can restart the other one. So if you are watching this, let's see if that works. Okay, still live. Well, a few people here. So maybe you guys are finding the new stream, but it didn't continue the old one for some reason. Sorry about that. I don't know what's going on. The internet's been a bit weird. Even even the the wizard created one is uh, is acting up a little bit. Anyway. Five okay, it looks like you're all sort of finding it again. I don't know if you have to like it would be good to know actually. Uh, those of you that were on the original one that that clicked off, if you get back here, please let me know if, uh, if it just came up again or if it's uh, if you had to do anything on your side to find this again because uh, again, just four of you now and. Yeah, let me know if, if you were on the stream originally when it died and now you're back on it. Let me know what you had to do to get here. Stream when it died and that are now on this one. Let me know what you did to find this one. And if you've got any questions, there's eight of you. So fire away a question if you want. Uh, there shouldn't be any delay. It should be a, a good internet going on here. But uh, yeah, and I don't know what is going on with this. Hmm. I just clicked on one of two active streams and got lucky. Right. So you've got two active ones, but one is actually dead. That's thanks for telling me that, Sam. That's uh, yeah, it's, it's not what it's supposed to happen. And I don't know why it dropped and then it wouldn't go on. Farmer Grady found this new stream in your video list. The one is there still, but stuck. Yeah, exactly. I was sitting in a buffer, backed out, and found the current one on your channel page. There, yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. It's so now you know. Hopefully, if it if that happens, you might have to just pop out and just check if there's another live stream going because usually this program is supposed to just continue from the one that died, but for some reason it hasn't done that the last couple of times. And I think it is up to date uh, software, so I'm not sure why it's doing that. But yeah. Um, I'm glad Farmer Grady is here though, because I'd like I like his opinion. He he's an actual proper farmer, not like myself, who's basically a mercenary turned crusader turned up. Well, I have to farm to you know build up the armies. <laughs> so, um, farmer, tell me what you think about my three rules that you have to prepare, execute, and then clean up. Um, I'd really like your take on that because. I've learned that if you do not prepare whatever you're going to work first, if you do not execute it properly, and if you do not clean up afterwards, you invariably run into problems. Um, eight of you, uh, I, don't, I wonder if there's a way to tell the other guy. You see, I can't even kill the other stream. That's the really frustrating thing. It's, uh, yeah, it's really irritating that because if I could at least kill it off, but I can't. I can't kill the original stream, which is really, really irritating. Anyway, enough of my bitching about the stream problems. There's 10 of you here, so hopefully uh, most of you have found your way here. 
Oh, para aqui. Uh. Yeah, those three are about spot on. Failure on step one or three will always come back to bite you later. Yeah. And like I said, I'm, I'm actually pretty good at um, the cleaning up and I'm pretty good at the actual execution. My weakness is the preparation because it's sort of like, well, there's a problem there. And it's like before, before I even think of how to approach the problem, it's like, well, I've, I've, got, I've got a machete. I'm sure I can fix it. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, you have to paint a house. But I've got a machete. I'm fine. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a little bit my failing in life, you know. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's just how I'm wired. And mind you, I'll, I'll get done. You know, I'll get it done. It's like, I will paint the house with the machete. It's just not particularly effective. And then the cleanup usually might take a bit longer, <laughs> but uh, it's, uh, you know, I, I've, I've, uh, oh, and today I bought a scythe. I bought a scythe and I have discovered, not quite to my surprise, but I only figured it out when I, when I got home and I thought about it before I put it together. I was like, oh, this is not going to work so well for me. Scythe actually worked really well. I'm actually thinking, this is fine. Um, plus, it's a good sistema movement. It's not like, you know, one of the two henchmen tried it out. And I could see like, like, ah, oh, this works well. I said, dude, you, you keep cutting like that. You're going to do about 10 minutes and then you'll be flat out dead. Well, if you do it properly, you can scythe the whole day. And it's just a wavy type of movement. The only problem is I'm a left-handed scyther. And there are some things that come more naturally to me with the, with a scythe. Um... Yes, Farmer Grady, that is how you know that uh, he's a farmer. He says there's always unexpected crisis, and that's 100% true. I'd like to point out, it's not most times, not 80% of the times, every single time you start a job, you start something carps up that wasn't planned for. And that's why, you know, I hesitated to add warfare or like combat to, to the to the three things because it's a little bit different, but um, you know, it's that old maxim, no plan survives contact with the enemy. And it's like no farming preparation survives contact with the land. <laughs> it's just, it will try and brutalize you somehow. And, uh, and what the farmer, farmer Grady says here is, uh, there's always unexpected crisis, but preparation minimizes them. Absolutely correct. Um, it's 100% true. And, uh, you know, Sam says, yeah, Murphy was an optimist indeed. And uh, actually, I went to a, a college, an engineering school, a civil engineering school, where one of the students at one point, because that place was just weird, you know, <laughs> he like, he turned, to, you know, once we were doing something with sifting of concrete, like grading, or I can't remember, some some practical that we were supposed to do. And some of the machines didn't work, the sifts weren't working, the rattling machine wasn't working, I don't know. And he just turned to me and he goes, you know Murphy? And he didn't have to say which Murphy. And I, yeah, I think he worked here. He went to school here. That, that's how he figured out his law. <laughs> and he was an optimist. <laughs> Instinctive Archer says, yeah, sharp tools are essential. Absolutely, indeed. My most loyal henchman is like, he'll just hack away. And I've noticed he's a good guy and he's really good for that detail of painting or something like that. But when he's hacking away at something with an axe, he's not that accurate in his strikes. You know, I'm pretty like, if I hit something, if I strike at something with my machete and axe or something, I'll hit pretty much the same spot I want to hit every time. He's like a little bit all over the place. And it's like, dude, your axe is blunt. No, it'll be fine. I'm like, and then he hits the dirt with it. I'm like, no, it will not be fine. Let us sharpen your weapon. <laughs> you know, he's getting there. He's young. But, um, yeah, sharp tools are indeed essential. And as I said, I found out I'm a left-handed scyther. And also, I remember, because this scyther's got both handles on the same side. I remember when I was a kid, it was like old farmer. He was using a big scythe, and it had the handles on opposite sides. And I think that works better. 
and I've got to find one that, that does that because the scythe is looking pretty effective. So I'm going to buy another one because, you know, one of the henchmen can use it. And uh, I'm going to look for a left-handed one that's got like the handles on opposite sides because this scythe uses your right hand to do the, the strength movement, really. Um, not really the strength movement, actually. The strength movement does come from the left, the pull, but the guiding directing everything is, is from the right so it puts a little bit of strain on my right arm and you know I've taken my tape off now but I, I have pulled some tendons in there and actually I would rather um, I don't know it's like like your left hand is your strength hand actually when you're using a sword or something like that and I I'm, I'm just not that comfortable it, it works and it's fine I can do it but I think I'd be more comfortable with like handles on the other side. And also I think I'd be more comfortable siding from left to right instead of right to left. I don't know why, but I want to try it out anyway. Um, after a while, one becomes prepared for the likely crisis. Thanks, Farmer McGrady. That may happen before I die, <laughs> but um, my generic attitude to like a crisis is like, KILL IT! You know, it's like, oh, we're doing this, and we're supposed to be doing this, and then something else comes up, and it's like, where's my hammer? Kill it! Kill the crisis! Throw it away. <laughs> it's not the most um, calm approach, but it is effective, and um, it does inspire the troops. You know, because my approach to farming, which is incorrect, I know this, is kind of like warfare, you know. If, if I was in a fight or in a... and something something unexpected always comes up in a fight or in a, in a confrontation or in a, in a battle or in a shootout or whatever, you know, you cannot plan for it. So it is, you have to think on your feet and move, move and act because if you don't move, you're dead. And if you don't act, you're dead. So it's move and act and it's act towards the enemy, like go for it. And it does help other people. You know, if you're in a group of people and the worst thing you can do is like, uh, hesitate or freeze up and everybody else panics as well but if you're like go 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 fight shoot move move to the left it doesn't even matter if it's right or wrong but everybody suddenly switches on like oh oh yeah 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 go forward you know so that's kind of the approach i take to farming when a crisis comes up everybody else are like oh there's a crisis how do we approach and i'm like you don't think you kill it <laughs> you know, it's sort of like so I don't know how long my loyal henchmen will last before they murder me in my sleep, but um, you know, so far we're getting on actually quite well. They're really good guys. I'm, I'm, I'm really very pleasantly surprised by the, uh, the Catholic men that are um, helping me out in this endeavor and that are, you know, wanting to live here and, and work here and, you know, raise their families here eventually. Uh, LS16 says, spares and alternatives for critical components, and if all else fails, bigger hammer. I know, I salvaged, we found, like, uh, quite a few tools we found were, like, rusted things that a guy just left rotting under, like, some crap, and we're like, oh, wait, this is an axe head, we can use this. So I've got a good two-handed axe that was, like, a rusty blade left lying around. I've got a good um, sledgehammer that was just a sledgehammer head. Everything else had rotted off it. I just bought a new uh, handle for it. It's really weird because it's got a really small opening. So the, the sledgehammer handle I got for it, it's it's not actually for a sledgehammer, for something else, but it's not designed. You know, that handle cannot take, like if you're just going to hammer down walls, it wouldn't be good for that because it's quite thin, almost like a broom, ha broom handle thin, but a better wood. But it's like almost like flexible, so it's like a sledgehammer that has got like a little bit of a whip on it. And if you hit it right, it doesn't put any stress on the handle, really. So it gives a really good whack. Um, then we also found a, what I call a hoe axe. Now, I, some people have informed me that in English it's called a mattock, but I like the word hoe axe. And one of my, uh, uh, you know, the cleric said, it's just because you like hoes, isn't it? <laughs> it's like. Yeah, okay, can't argue, fine, <laughs> but um, it's, uh, 
it, it's a very useful tool, the mattock or the hoe axe, as I call it, you know, because it's got a little hoe on one side. And also the mattocks I've seen that you buy online, they're not like this one, because the, 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 the hoe part of this one is actually like, you know, I don't know if you can see my hand, but it, it's like a little curve, you know, it's not flat, it's not like a little one axe that way and, a, and one axe that way sort of thing. It's like, a normal axe on the thing and on the back you've, you've got, you know so you've got an axe here and on the back you've got like a little actual hoe you know like a little curved digger and it's a very useful tool for pulling up stumps and stuff it really helps to dig around there um, Dan Boone says how much would a two acre plant with home on it in your region cost wanting to save up my pennies two acre is nothing two acre is one hectare more or less a bit less than one hectare i think if you're going by like you know list price prices a hectare would be like can be up to like uh you know between 10 and 30 grand but that's not and then on the home depends what home on it if it's an old home if it's a big home how many square meters are you talking about but you know Say like a smallish home, like 150 square meters, which is not a big home. You, I mean, you can get a 90 square meter home, but I, like farming houses tend to be a bit bigger because they're older. But like a 150 square meter home that maybe needs a quite a bit of work on a one hectare plot, uh, you could probably pick that up for like, I don't know, 40, 50 grand, something like that. Um, euro that is so a bit more call it sixty thousand dollars something like that um, you know but then if you're gonna live in Italy you gotta there's some hoops you jump to I made a blog post on it and um, you have to have some kind of work permit or if you've got legacy uh, you know if your grandparents were Italian or something you can probably do something with that but I'm not 100% sure how that works uh, yep, instinctive arches just don't hit the dirt with good sharp tools if you want to keep them that way. Yeah, exactly. Dirt is like will murder the, the edge on any blade of any kind. Uh, ben Evans, Hale Kurgan, I haven't managed to catch one of your streams live in a while. If there's a Q&A besides land building costs, how much would you say one should set aside for starting a homestead? As much as you can. Um, Let's see. This place, I'd say, I've already blown about ten percent of the of what it cost just to set up. But you you got to keep in mind this was, you know, the the guy who sold me this like basically ripped me off to to the extent that he had taken every single piece of item that you could possibly take without getting sued for it out. He, like I told you, he'd cut the wires to take the light bulb fittings, you know, on every single place of, of the of the property, leaving live wires all over the fucking outside, you know, it's just a real piece of shit. Um, you would have stripped the paint off the walls if you could have put it back in the tin, really. So, um, and, and a lot of that required, you know, fixing and, and doing stuff up, so a lot of expenses in that. But in terms of tools... Uh, depending on the size of your farm, but one of the most essential tools is definitely a tractor. You need a little tractor, and it needs to be the right size for your property. I mean, if it's a flat one hectare of land, you probably don't even need a tractor. You just need, you know, a grass cutter, and there's these, I don't know what you call them in English, there's like a little hand thing that you you hold, and it just churns up the ground. And once you once it's churned up the ground, you can just sort of let it carry on. And once you get used to it, it's not that hard to use. But initially, you're like fighting it like a bronco. Um, a one hectare plot, you can probably get away with just that without attract. You know, if you've got a one of those grass trimmers that you sit on, you've got a couple of decent tools like trim hedge trimmers and a couple of trimmers. Probably you can get away without having a tractor. But, you know, if you've got like a few hectares. You definitely need a tractor. Um, the only advantage of not having a tractor is that you're doing everything the way that they used to do in the old days. And if you get used to doing it that way, even if the boogaloo hits, you can still carry on doing it that way. 
Um, and also the other cool thing is we've got fireflies all over the place, which is a good indicator of a very biologically stable ecosystem, um, which I like. I like having that. And I'm not a, you know, like I said, I'm not a farmer by nature. So some people will be like, oh, okay, I can grow crops in between these olive trees and I can grow fruit trees. And, you know, we've got like four or five wild cherry trees and we've got one good cherry tree, which is like the good cherries. Then we've got like some fig trees, we've got some pomegranate trees, we've got some peach trees, which nothing wild peaches, so they're not really that edible. But anyway, they, they got eaten alive by the bugs before we even saw any of them, before they even got beyond the green. So it really, you know, it's a very hard question to say, but if in an ideal world, what are you going to spend buying the property and the house? assuming it needs minimal fixing up you know like say i don't know 10 grand to fix it up to get it the way you want it buy some furniture whatever um i would ideally i would want to have 30 percent cash set aside to like make the farm the way i want to um, so whatever the cost of the house is or the cost of the property i would add 30 percent on top to get it like ship shape without you know having to struggle or like work hard I've basically run out of cash now, so it's just fucking grafting, and I have to, like, I don't know, invent some way to get some more money and whatever. So, on that note, if you want to buy my books by the pallet, you know, feel free. I'll send you a certificate of uh, loyalty to the Kurganet or something. Um, but, um, yeah, so, it's, it's expensive, you know, and, and farming... Like, don't let anybody tell you it's an easy life. It's fucking, it's endless. You will never, ever, ever finish a day where you think, yeah, it's all done. I can chill for a week now. I don't need to do anything. It never comes. You will always have myriads of things to do. And Mandy says, came to the party. <laughs> Ave Maria. <sighs> Ave Mandy. Um, Dan Boone, thank you. I look into the blog post. My great grandfather's from Sicily. We are from the south and refer to them as the Italian side of the family. Sicilians are okay, you know, Calabrese and Pugliese and those guys. They're you know, Moroccans, basically. So are the Sicilians, but I actually get on with the Sicilians. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm quite a bit further north than that, but I did look at Sicily. I actually looked at Sicily because I like watching the Montalbano TV series. It's one of the best, I'd say the only decent TV in Italy that ever, that was ever made and probably will be the last. But Sicily is actually quite beautiful um, and you can get a lot for your money there. Um, I mean, we could have bought, I could have bought like a 500 square meter, almost walled city with like 50 locations, you know, 50 rooms or whatever, bathrooms or whatever. But the problem was, and, and with like hectares and hectares of land, or well, there was another place that was like 400 hectares of land and uh, a 400 square meter uh, footprint of a house. But the footprint of a house was a ruin, it was literally a ruin with like fucking, you know, weeds growing over it. You would have had to like go in there with like big machinery to tear everything down and rebuild from scratch. So you would have had the cost of not just that, but like of building a brand new house on top of it. So it just would have become unaffordable. But I mean, if I'd had the money, you know, 400 hectares, fucking hell, you know, that's like huge. And in Sicily, you can buy a lot of land, but again, you have to be a little bit careful because the, a lot of land in Sicily is not particularly fertile. It's almost desertic, which is fine for like things like olive trees and stuff like that. But you know, olive trees, you're not gonna make you know, millions like with your olive trees to give you an idea, like on my property, say there's about 400 trees or so. Um, and if all goes well and you collect all the olives and everything, I worked out you can make about six, seven grand a year from, from the, if you sell it as olive oil, about that. And you have to add the cost of like, that, that's if you just take it to somebody who like makes, you know, squishes the olives to make the oil. And then you have to add the cost of like the, the containers. So 
I'd say probably six grand, maybe. And there's a lot of work. You know, when you collect the olives, though, you've got to do it in like two, three days. And then you've got to clean them up, you know, pick out all the leaves and stuff. So it's a lot. It's very labor intensive for at least the week that you're collecting it and getting the oil out of it. For like six, six grand a year, um, you know, you, you can't live on six grand a year. So, but if you're just, you know, eating a bunch of olives yourself and like giving it to like friends and whatever, like selling it to like the people you know around you, it's a little income, it helps. And then you've got other stuff going on. Maybe you've got some fruits that you sell. Maybe you plant, you know, there's enough land we can plant fucking shitload of whatever, potatoes and stuff. Some people, we would have space to keep animals if we were that way inclined. I'm not particularly, but the wife is like, chickens, we need chickens. Look how many eggs we eat. We need chickens. You have like, you know, English breakfast every day, chickens. And I'm like, they stink. I don't really want chickens. I mean, I want a bunch of slaves and sir. I mean, loyal henchmen and serfs, you know, to go out there and farm their whatever i'll conquer the land i'll give it to them they just give us some eggs i'll be fine you know so uh, like i said i'm not really a farmer like one there's a good old older dude who's like um helped me out actually to do the because the kitchen was fitted but then you have to do the electrical implantation yourself the wiring a plug for the kitchen appliances literally wiring a socket you know you take the three wires you connect them you that requires a certification in Italy. I'm like, what the fuck? It's a plug. Like, you know, I thought they were like talking about certification for the like wiring of the house. I'm like, but it's a socket. Like, oh, but you need a guy that certifies it because otherwise if something happens, you know, I'm like, dude, it's a fucking socket. And they, the, the guys who stole the kitchen won't do that. They'll say, oh, no, no, you've got to get a plumber to do the, the drainage and you've got to get an electrician to do the, the electrical stuff. So I'm like, what the fuck? But, you know, luckily I've been here long enough, called the electrician, called the plumber. It's so stupid. I mean, it's shit I could do myself, right? But the plumbing, I preferred actually somebody else doing that one because, you know, it can always leak and that's just plumbing is a bit of a mystic art. So this older dude came here and he's got like some back problems, some knee problems. So I like sorted out his back and his knees quickly, like doing some systema stuff. And he was like, oh yeah, I feel better. Anyway, he like sorted everything out and... Um, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a very uh, nice guy. So what did I start talking about this for? Uh, I can't remember now. I was talking about the olive oil. Oh, can't remember. If you remember why I started telling this story, Tom. Oh, rototiller. That's what that little machine in the American Southwest. Yeah, there you go. Rotot yeah, sounds right. We, we call it uh, motozappa, which is like motorized hoe. <laughs> we tell you it's just like hose. <laughs> Everything's a hoe. <laughs> I don't know. Um, LS16 says, even a decent little lawnmower and some select attachments can make life easier. Mower, deck, rototiller, and little trailer. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at that, I'm thinking about that. The color you have on your skin compared to a few months ago is noticeable. I bet you have so much vitamin E, Corona cannot contaminate the curd. <laughs> uh, yeah, my, I told, I don't know if I told you guys on stream the other day, I like popped my head and I had to go and do some paperwork, whatever in town. Uh, so I actually, you know, this is like one of my work t-shirts. I mean, actually this is one of my good work t-shirts because it doesn't have a bunch of holes and scratches on them. But I'd actually dressed up, you know, like with one of my two clean white shirts and some jeans or whatever. And I just popped my head around the corner to say to my wife, okay, look, I'm going. She looks at me and goes, oh my God, you're so dark. You're so suntan. You look mixed race. And I'm like, it's always a new guy with me, isn't it? <laughs> so, um, and you know, she she's very English. So she's like, I'll, I'll get that brown. <laughs> I just don't get enough sun. You're always out working. <laughs> like, okay, you can spend a month trying to get the color I get in like a week. Not really going to happen. <laughs> but she does like to tease. She's funny. Uh, yes, LS16. I, I am definitely thinking about a little lawnmower with some select attachment. Michael Peck says, the Kurgan, are there many beekeepers where you are? 
Well, we got a beekeeper who actually came to put his bees. He put like, uh, I can't remember now, it's almost 20 like beehives. And he's taken them back now and asked him, so how did it go? And he was like, disastrous. I got like 5% of what I was hoping to get. And it's not just him telling me that so he doesn't have to give me any honey or whatever. It's um, because I've spoken to other people and they said, yeah, this year was horrific. It was really bad for bees. Uh, but I'm hoping that if I keep, you know, my property clean, I don't have like, we had deer, we have deer in the little forest, like the other day, my, I haven't seen one up close yet, but my wife saw a deer, like looking out the kitchen window in the morning, she was making tea or something, she's like, oh, there's a deer right there, she, you know, first she thought it was a dog, I'm like, no, that's too big to be a dog, and the deer like used to like scratch their horns on some of the trees, so we've got to be a bit careful because some of the trees are like fragile and they've got a, We've got a piece of forest that's original, whatever the forest in this area is. So it's sort of like protected. And we also have a couple of, you know, two lines of vineyard of grapes that are also like some kind of rare grape. Not enough to really make wine. Maybe you can make wine for yourself, a few bottles, but um, I'd have to like cultivate that. And I've only cleared the one vine. I'm going to clear the other vine. And then I want to set it up properly. You know, I like doing things, sort of doing do it properly because like, all the cables are like loose. They had like brambles on them for like two years. So I want to replant the, the poles and stretch some wires across the properly right next to it. Um, because, you know, the thing with vineyards, you can actually, even if the plant is growing here, you can sort of direct it there and it'll grow up there. So I want to do a proper vineyard and then pull out all the old stuff and you can reuse that somewhere else or whatever. Um, yeah, Italian bees are some of the most docile species. I mean, that's true. I, like My son got bitten by one because we went close to the beehives, which I knew you shouldn't do. And, you know, my wife wanted to see it and she had, she had the boy. And uh, one landed on him and he just like, he's, he doesn't, he's not scared of bugs or anything. He'll pick up anything. And just like kind of like, oh, and like it stung him. Like, ow. But again, like little warriors, like, oh, daddy, oh. And like two little tears. Then he's like, buggy, I. <laughs> and like we pulled out the little stinger. And we just walked away. And uh, one of the most loyal henchmen, while he was busy trimming away the the brambles, um, I saw him like, hey, something got you. Because like, yeah, a bee got me. I just felt something going through my shirt. And I thought, ah, oh, it's a piece, piece of the stuff flying around it. And then a minute later, I felt like, oh. Like, <laughs> but he had a pretty good. <laughs> it was, the bees have never really stung me. They don't, you know, if you leave them alone, they leave you alone. They just, like, they bump into my head sometimes because there's like a, highway of them when that when the beekeeper was here and they just like tink you know there's like literally a little highway of bees and when you walk through it they like sometimes they just bump into you but but yeah there are quite a lot of beekeepers where i am i guess i i don't really beekeeping is like one of those you gotta love that shit because it's labor intensive difficult you have to keep the bees alive in winter it's like man it's a lot of work and I don't know that you even break even at the end of it. Ben Evans says, cheers for the insights. And that place sounds like paradise. You're only just getting started. And already you've given more useful information than <laughs> the guy who yells at the moon. <laughs> oh, I know what you're talking about. That fucking idiot who thinks that zoning doesn't matter. And oh, you can just get people. Man, zoning. Look, in Italy, you can get away with most things. Not because you can get away with anything, because the bureaucracy here is unreal. But if you screw up and you fuck up some zoning thing because, you know, or you, you, you do something because you didn't know, they, they'll fine you. But, you know, the fines can be hectic. They can be thousands. They can make you tear down, whatever. But, you know, I've been pretty, I'm pretty methodical with that shit. So it's like I make sure that before I do anything, it's like, okay, what's the rule? I go and check, even if I have to spend like fucking days to get the appointment to the government official. And then I go and talk to him and I say, okay, so this is what I've got. This is where I am. What can I do? What can I not do? Because like there's building regulations, there's all sorts of like rules about farming. Um, you know, in, 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 I, don't, I don't know in the States, but in Italy, you've got all sorts of regulations. Like, um, you know, there's certain parts of the forest, like I said, that are original of this area, so you can't chop down trees, you can only do like cutting down of dead trees and whatever in a certain period of the year, you can only do certain 
farm or at certain times of the year you're not allowed to do it other times you can't use certain you know poisons or whatever like you know a lot of farmers will use but in, in my and I don't want to use that shit anyway to be honest although there are some biological things that you can use that are that are okay because we've got a crap load of stink bugs and Chinese stink bugs you know bugs from the bug people and they're not endemic to this area they're not original from this area and they just fucking destroy everything but apparently they've now found some uh, normal you know some, something that is organically it's it's like a I don't know the essence of a flower or something something that doesn't hurt the, any of the other plants that the stink bugs don't like or it kills them or something so I'm gonna look into that because I don't like using insecticides and all that shit but but you kind of need to treat the plants in some respects you know there, there are things you need to do and I'm just finding out about this stuff but even that you know you, you can't just go and buy a bunch of plant poison for the whatever to keep the olive trees healthy you you need to know what you're doing you need to like go to a school that will that will teach you that oh you can use this and then you get you get like a little license that allows you to use certain products at certain times of the correct times of the year and you know it, it's a, it's a lengthy you know you, you've got to do things properly otherwise you just fuck yourself up and when it comes to building i mean building in italy is the, i don't even know how people can exist in the construction industry in this country because it's ridiculous the the amount of paperwork that needs to be done the amount of regulations you need to follow the amount of it's just it's actually stupid but again my point is like it doesn't matter how retarded it is you got to do the paperwork otherwise you're fucked and that's how the government fucks you so i hate it just like everybody else but i've become really good at doing the paperwork because i learned that's the game they want to play it's the satanic thing right it's like oh well we'll put so much paperwork that they fuck something up and then we fuck them no i read all the paperwork and i do all the paperwork and then it's like fuck you stay away from my shit now and you know kind of works Farmer Grady says, chickens are the most efficient farm animal, but having someone else doing it for you would be even more so. That's what I was talking about, the old dude that came to fix my um, my sink. Because he is, he's got chickens, he's got rabbits, and he lets the chickens roam free, so they're true free range. And it's not bullshit, because I went to his house, and the chickens are just running around. I'm like, fucking hell, dude, you know, do, do they even come back? And he's like, chicken, they all come back there at night. The only problem is the fox has killed six or seven of them already. I'm like, fox kills your, you know? Like, yeah, the fucking fox keeps killing my chickens and just killed a couple of rabbits too. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I'm a hunter. <laughs> but the thing is, he showed me his like rabbits and they're like these really cute rabbits. Like, look, this rabbit has had 12. Like, it's not, it's quite rare. And they did, uh, so he showed me these cute little bunnies, you know? And I'm like, I'm looking at that, and I'm like, that's really cool. I could never do what you're doing. You know, I'm a hunter and kind of a killer by instinct. I got to kill an animal, hunt it down, you know, whatever. I, I, I mean, fuck, I tracked down people, you know, when I was in, in Africa. Like, the work I did was, like, arrest people and, you know, fucking with a gun in my hand. You know, we, we did all sorts of shit, right? And I've been hunting since I was a kid. I mean, hunting is fine. It doesn't bother me at all. But to have an animal, and then you grow it, and you farm it, and it has the babies... And then you kill them and you eat them. It's like, dude, I, I couldn't do I couldn't digest that food. And he looked at me and goes, Yeah, you're a hunter, you're not a farmer. There's actually a word in Italian I don't think exists in English, which is allevatore. But allevare means to raise. But you can allevare your kids, you know? And you can allevare farm animals. So an allevatore is somebody who raises, grows farm animals for food and whatever. And it's like, yeah, that's I'm not that, you know, and I told my wife, and I said, yeah, you know, the old man, he's like, he's got chickens and stuff, and, but that's why I told him, I said, look, if you get chickens and you make eggs, you bring all the eggs you can bring, I'll buy all the eggs you can, you can produce, you know, and he was like, oh, okay, uh, because, you know, he's like an older dude, and he's just like, little job here, little job there, you know, that's how he survives, so, I'm like, I'll buy your eggs, dude, then I don't have to have stinky shit, chicken shit all over the place, um, and, um, but I couldn't, you know, I told my wife, I said, like, you know, the guy raises rabbits and he's like, she's like, 
Well, so go get six of his rabbits. So get six of the little bunnies. I'm like, what the fuck? They're, they're bunnies. You know, they're going to fucking six months later, you're going to have 50 of them. She's like, no, no, no. Sorry. She said, no, get the bunnies. I'm like, what? I'm not going to go get six bunnies and then we fucking eat the bunnies. And she's like, no, 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 we don't eat them. We just let them run around. And I'm like, they're rabbits. You know, six months later, you're going to have 50 of the fucking things. And when I told the old man that, he laughed and he goes, no, 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 no. A week later, you'll have none of them. Because the fox will have eaten all of them if you let them run around. Like, <laughs> I was like, okay, with the fox again. <laughs> so it, it's it's an interesting life anyway. It's, it's funny. And uh, Michael Pecker says, that's what kids are for. <laughs> yeah. Except that this guy, when he when he sh- was showing me his bunnies, he said, yeah, and this one had eight, you know, eight bunnies, but like one died. And I'm like, oh, shame, it was small. It's like, no, you know, I've got little nephews and the kids of the next door neighbor, you know, they come here, they play with the bunnies, you know, but they're, they're kind of rough kids. I'm like, wait, so those cute little boys that I just saw when we came here with the dad, which, and it looked like, I, I don't know, it was like a scene out of like fucking deliverance, Italian redneck, you know, there's like a dad with a, the, what do you call the thing with the oh you know long hair the back thing i forgot what it's called right now my, my english is getting rusty um you know with, with the redneck haircut and two beautiful dirty little kids and he's like in a wife beater vest and like they just look cool you know like like kind of salt of the earth people and the, and the kids are like you could see they were like who's this bald dude you know let's watch him dad and like they all went near their dad but you can see they're not a little fuckers, you know, but but like in a cool way. So I said, hi, hi, you know, like, and they all said, hello, hello. And then like the old man goes, yeah, yeah, one of those little fuckers, you know, he just played with the rabbit, like, killed the rabbit. I'm like, wait, those cute little kids were like three or four. They just murdered one of your bunnies. Like, yeah, shit happened. <laughs> I was like, that, that traumatized me, man. You know, my, 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 I'm a kind soul. I mean, if you're talking about killing heretics, burning them at the stake, no problem. I'm there. But, you know, sweet little bunny rabbit. That's just horrible, man. I couldn't handle that. (laughs) (laughs) And Jordan says, you may look half cast, but at least you're morally white. (laughs) You know, that's that's from one of the... um, who was that guy that, that Iranian or Armenian or whatever it was who shut up a bunch of people and then like people said there's white supremacist and they figured out he actually wasn't white but the newspaper heading was like Iranian terrorist was moderately white <laughs> like, what the hell does that mean <laughs> and like the second crusader when when he came here and you he saw some of the shit that the previous owner left I like I don't know man this guy was you know he wasn't a Jew but he kind of behaved like one and he just instantly goes he was moderately Jewish. <laughs> it's just funny. It's, it's quite, quite a... Alicia says, bees only sting if you're allergic to them. There's some truth to that, I think. Machelerata says, been a while since I caught a stream live. God bless you all. Hello. LS16. That flower extract is the same base chemical as an insecticide called Warrior 2 in the US. Works a little better than the ACCAM version, but very tricky to handle and apply. Good stuff. Dude, I'm going to write that down because that's, uh, it's called what? Warrior 2. Well, that's an easy thing to remember. And it is a flower extract. LS16, you know, I am... Uh, you you told you you did mention that you're a farmer. Uh, I'm curious to know more. And if, if you're okay to tell us on stream, like generic area of where you are, that'd be that'd be cool. So warrior two, hey? Eh? Warrior two flower extract. Okay. And it works on the Chinese stink bugs. Hmm. Okay, good to know. Then who have we got? Um, oh, Greeny Houdini. Hello. Yes, my weenie dog loved killing my ducks. Yeah, weenie dogs are evil fuckers. Mullet, that's it. With an Italian redneck with a mullet. Thanks, Snipe. Uh, so, yeah, it's, uh, I gotta say, it's it's been 
a lot of hard work and you know some days it's kind of frustrating but it's actually i don't i don't mind this kind of work or life it's pretty good my little dude he's uh shame he, he just wants to help he wants to get involved he wants to do whatever you're doing and if you give him a little task he, he'll do it you know he'll like okay dad and it's so cute it was one of the first words you he, he learned it was like help you know like his mom would say oh do you want some help and then he like if he needs help he's like help help me help me and then like when you're doing something like dad help dad help like he wants to help he wants to do something it's like he's like a hilarious little guy i mean and uh, uh, the, the one of the, the you know scouts took a film of him running like a pure. You can that guy. I am sure my son was a Viking in some past life because he just runs down the little incline the, the road and like ah and just body slams you, full on body slams you. And it's like you know the the, the scout henchman was like. You should get this kid into rugby. I'm like, man, if he becomes as big as I think he is, he's going to be like John Alomo who? <laughs> he's, he's, um, yeah, he's, he's good. Pew and Bear says, farm life is brutal. I've seen huge mama pig devouring chickens and rabbits. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's that shit happens. I, I, I told you that the scout henchman, like, killed a toad with the, the wire cutter. There's a toad that's been decapitated, something. I was like, it was you, dude. You had the trimmer. Oh, no. The heart, look of horror on his face. Say it was me. And, like, he chewed its face off. And it was, like, tried to see if it would live. But nah, eventually I just, you know, ground down a, a little piece of reinforcing. And I hammered it through its brain to put it out of its misery. And um, he said, oh, you know, to be fair, he's like, and he's kind of squeamish with stuff. You know, like, slimy things, slugs, bugs. He's, he's He doesn't like any of that. I'll do it if you want me to. I was like, that's okay. You'll do the next one. You know, there'll be plenty of time for you to get your hands dirty. I'll just show you how to do this one. And um, I don't know. The wife made another cruel joke the other day. <laughs> I can't remember what it was. But it's something like, I don't know. The You know, the little monkey said something like, ah, oh, the frogs make a lot of noise. And the wife was like, not when Scout is around. <laughs> She's like, <"Oop." laughs> It was an unintentional murder. And the 16 says, I'll look up what the organic version is and drop you a link. Thanks, man, when the stream is over. Yeah, just drop me an email. I mean, you, you know where my blog is. I'm sure you can ping me. That. I really appreciate that. And I get my combine jump started. Oh, you've got a combine. You're a proper farmer. Not, uh, not somebody like me who's basically LARPing at being a farmer while, while he, he hopes for the apocalypse to kick off so that I can come into my own <laughs> you know i mean my my preferred position would be warlord you know whatever military baron king of an area caliph it doesn't really matter as long as i could just i'll protect the peasants as long as the parents peasants farm the land and i have to worry about fucking fields of grain and shit like that I'll, you know, you just provide enough for me to survive and I'll man the walls. Me and my crusaders will man the walls and protect the village. That's that's the deal, right? I'd happily do that. You know, the, 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 the peasants don't have to go to war or any of that. They just farm the land and feed the warrior caste, which... Under my rule, the warrior caste would not be able to take any liberties. No, no, no. They would do their job. They would put their lives on the line. And if they died, that's it. Not one of these cop things. I put my life on the line every day. You chose the job, idiot. Do the job. And if you get killed on the job, that's the job. <laughs> you know? Have a funeral and get done with it. Move on. It's like warrior caste is there to protect the citizenry. And they get certain things, you know, they'll get certain benefits, if you want to call them that, or they get certain advantages that normal citizens don't have. But at the same time, they do nasty shit that the normal citizens don't have to do and don't want to do. You know, pick who you want to be. That's kind of how life is. 
Greeny Houdini says, my daughter turned 18 and whole ass. Cherish the younger years, that's for sure. Oh, yeah, I, uh, I know. I mean, you know, I'm getting wiser, of course, every day. So hopefully I'll still be around when they make kids, because why not be? Uh, yeah, no, I know, I, I do, and unfortunately, i got a shitload of work to do, so I don't have a lot of time with the kids at the moment, but um, as they get a little older, I, you know, I plan to, I'm slowly getting them to, like, do little things here and there, and, uh, you know, the, so far, they're enjoying it, I think, so hopefully, that'll carry on down the line, but I also have to explain to them about the world, because, you know, some things you got to live through before you can experience them. Oh, pardon me. What time is it? I suppose it's getting a bit late. But um, yeah, shoot any questions or any topic. We can change the topic now. We're talking about farming for a little bit. And LS16 says to Heinz, uh, no, sorry, POB asks LS16, have you tried some effective microorganism in the farming? Heard good things about that stuff. Used it once, small scale, Balkan. Okay. I'm happy about the effect. Yeah, I'm ignorant about that stuff and it's not really my, my thing, you know. I'll, I'll try and find out about it because I have to, but I'm not particularly thrilled at the thought. Although, uh, the scout loyal henchman is like, I'm thinking of doing an agricultural course just so I learn all this shit. And I'm like, good. <laughs> you know, somebody should. <laughs> Ain't gonna be me, though. Microbes are amazing, says Green Hoodie. So, just out of curiosity, how many people here actually farm? I know Farm Grady obviously farms. Uh, it looks like possibly Instinctive Archer might farm uh, ls16 as a farmer there's quite a few farmers here that's uh it's quite impressive and green houdini says nematodes are really amazing for plants oh i heard about those are they the ones that kill all the, there's a bug i don't know what it is but it like so a leaf is normally green but like on the fruit trees and so on they'll turn this leaf like all twisted and kind of reddish and it's just like <laughs> kills the leaf and it's some little bug that lives in the tree and if you don't spray the tree apparently the old man was telling me, they'll do it either he doesn't give a fuck that guy will use like fucking agent orange if it like saves his plants he's like definitely not a a green dude i'm not really a green dude myself but it's like i don't like the fucking poison in the ground you know i like things to i think nature has its balance and we have fucked it up and i need to kind of find it again Okay, Greeny Houdini says she has a few small crops. Pure and Bear says, never big scale myself. My parents were back in the days. Well, I'm, I'm actually curious about you guys. I want to do a stream about you. So, I don't remember, I don't, I don't notice. Uh, if, so, who was the other person? Oh, Sam. Sam Harsha also looks like he's probably a farmer. And I guess he's in the American Southwest. So what is that? Alabama, Texas, something like that. Where's, where, where, where are the rest of you? Again, you know, they don't have to give me the name of your town or whatever, but the generic, uh, I'm, I'm interested in just the generic geographic area, you know. If you're in the state, maybe you can just say the state you're in if you're happy to do that. Michael Pecker, my parents left the farming life when they came to Canada. I'm close enough. I don't know what the fuck you'd farm in Canada, though. I mean, ice and the bitter cold of winter, I think. Farmer Grady says there's so many kinds of nematodes, good, bad, and neutral. They are all in the soil. Sam Harsha says, I'm a dirty engineer, Arizona. I like Arizona. I've been to Arizona, been to Flagstaff, been to Tucson, been to Phoenix. I like Flagstaff. Um, it's an interesting thing because I was 
<laughs> there to meet a woman. Um, and I was reading, I just finished reading uh, Voice of the Whirlwind by Walter John Williams, where the guy starts out in Flagstaff. It was quite interesting. Um, yeah. Uh, and there was a meteorite that fell there that was green while I was there. The guy at the observatory in Flagstaff, the, um, uh, the, the, the observatory that's named after the guy who drew the canals on Mars, whose name escapes me now. See what old age, when I'm fucking busy doing a million things, I can't remember the stuff I know. Oh, who was it? Uh, anyway. The idiot, supposed astronomer, who's like touting himself as a scientist, he did um, like a, a model of like, if the Earth was this big, this is how far Pluto would be. Like, that's a model I've done in my book, in the face of Mars. And like, he got it completely fucking wrong. The scales that they had and the, the, the science they had were completely off. And I was like, no, that's wrong. And the woman I was with, like, well, what do you mean? No, it's wrong. Read the first two chapters of my book and you'll realize that they the fucked it up. The scale is completely wrong. They got it wrong. <laughs> and I work with NASA. <laughs> no, you don't. You're an idiot. But, uh, but I liked Arizona, and I quite like the people in Arizona. Arizona, unlike San Francisco and uh, Minnesota, which I didn't like, the people actually had a bit of a spine. I remember I, walked in, I was trying to buy a gun for export because I was working as a bodyguard in South Africa, and there was a particular gun I wanted. But I realized the average American has never left his state, never mind America. So it was like, it's really easy to export guns from America if you're a gun dealership. You can just... Lowell, that's it. Thank you, Sam. Percival Lowell. How the hell that escapes me? Maybe I'm getting seen on my old age. Um, but um, anyway, he, you, you know, I'd, I'd walk into a gun shop and it's like, okay, do you export to guns? Because I thought there's no point in talking to a guy who's never done it, who's like, oh, I don't really know how to do it. And it's just wasting his time and mine. So the first thing I do is like walk into a gun shop and go, do you guys export outside of the United States? And I remember there's one gun shop I walked in and there's like full on redneck. Okay. He was like kind of a moonshine mustache type of guy. And I walked in and I said, uh, sorry, before you know, waste your time, I want to know, can you export guns to outside of the U S and he goes, which country outside of the U S and I go, South Africa. No, nah, not to South Africa. <laughs> and it was like, and I mean, it was, bright brilliant white as the scout henchman says but it was very clear that he just looked at me and i thought fuck you you racist bastard i'm not giving you a gun <laughs> and it's like there was no point to threat you know it's like yeah dude you kind of got me wrong i'm not one of them but okay at least i respect you've got a an attitude you know you've got a principle in san francisco it was like oh you're from south africa oh great what's it like there i'm like well you know we're the only country in the world that realizes that black people are inferior so we make them slaves oh oh that's so interesting same guy next day just to fuck with his head i'd say shit like you know like you know i thought about our conversation and i was just wrong south africa's wrong black people are just like us and they're just human beings and we need to treat them equally same guy that you know day before i was like yeah slavery is good Oh, oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's nice. I'm like, look to my brother. Like, what the hell is wrong with these people? Don't any of them have a spine, an opinion, an original thought? It doesn't matter what you say to them. They're just like, oh, cool. Oh, yeah, that's great. Fucking, oh, I couldn't stand that shit. At least in Arizona, they could be rude sometimes or something, you know? So... Let's see. Now, Sam says he's a dirty engineer. I don't know if that was supposed to be a dirt engineer or a dirty engineer. I mean, all engineers are dirty. We, we just, that's how we're wired, man. But, you know. <laughs> Alice 16 says, family dairy farm, fourth generation, not organic, but not excessive with chem or fertilizer application. Dude, dairy farms, that's cows, right? Or goats or something that makes milk. That is hectic, hectic hard work, I think. 
depressed. Michael Pecker says, lots of canola in Alberta. Canola. And LS16, haven't tried that. I'll look into it. Greeny Houdini says, I'm on the Gulf of Mexico. I've never been there, but I believe that's a very beautiful spot. Is that like Florida, or is that like actual... What is that? Is that part of Texas? I don't know. Off the top of my... I don't have my map up here, so... Still have to put that up. I haven't done that yet. I mostly grow cannabis. Oh, <laughs> must be Florida. And you got those little cigarette boats, right? And you run. No, wait. Must be Mexico because you're running it north, right? <laughs> Taking care of cancer patient at the moment. Oh, okay. Pam Bear says, check ya. I do things around firewalls, networking. Okay. And Farmer Grady says he's in the Northwest US, mostly wheat and rapeseed grown here, same as Canada, just a little more warm season than the Canadians have. Well, that's not a hard thing to beat. I mean, I think fucking polar bears have got more summer than the Canadians. So Northwest. So you must have been close to the guy who screams at the moon because it's a lamp. Uh, in that sort of area, is that right? Or originally where he was, now he's run off somewhere else, I think. I don't know. Now, Idaho is still northwest, isn't it? I think. Fjorn Bear says, uh, check Dr. Teruo Higa research into it. You may have something local, though. Okay, Teruo Higa. I should write that one down. Oh, right in my mouth. See how I tell you that when I yawn, but not when I... Uh, Speak like a what's a guy's name? Doctor Teru Higa. Okay. I'll look into that. The Japanese are usually ahead in some stuff or totally crazy. But you know. 50-50. David Perkins at 80 degrees, sunny and thundering where I am. Oh good. Michael Packard, David Perkins, you must know Fahrenheit is inferior to Calvin and Celsius. Yes, indeed. Indeed, David. Greeny says, yes, well, I hear San Fran is where all the fruity men stay. Oh, it's, it was horrible. My brother lived there for a while. It was like one of the most soulless places on earth. It's just gross. Chad, hello, Chad. Chad, you're from South Africa. That's why you're so based. No, it makes sense. And people are always confused. I'm not black. <laughs> you're kind of black, dude. You're kind of black. I got a South African. You know, I, I, I know South Africa. We're black. On the coast of Louisiana. See? Louisiana is one of those places I always wanted to see. I think since I saw that film, which is now probably more than 30 years old, Southern Comfort. I think that was supposed to be in Louisiana. I don't know. I kind of like that whole slow, sweaty, redneck vibe that it's like, yeah, but they're kind of smart, you know. In their own little weird redneck way, they're like, we'll get you. <laughs> that sort of thing. And um, one of my favorite TV shows in the last few years, True Crime, with um, Woody Harrison and, um, oh, what's the guy who always takes his shirt off, but he doesn't so much in this one. Uh, Oh, the guy that me and Scott always sings, all right, all right, all right. When he says that in one of his films. Uh, I, can't, I can't remember his name right now. A famous actor, Woody Harrelson, and why do I always forget this guy's name? I'm so crap with names. Anyway, it's one of the best 
TV series I've seen, and, it, and it's set in the South, in, in America, like about the serial killers and whatever. And it's called Through Crime. It's awesome. It's like eight-part little mini-series, and it's great. Matthew McConaughey. Thank you, Greeny Houdini. Yeah. And David Perkins says, The Great Farmer. <laughs> what? Snipes is located in central California, lots of farmland here, learning to garden and raise livestock. Wow. I thought central California was like oranges or something. And yeah, people are ignorant. And yes, uh, LS16 says, and yes, dairy farming has been regularly compared to marriage. There are no days off, plus side. Don't have to worry about what day it is. You already know what you're doing today. <laughs> yeah. Um, my little farm is a bit different. I, I, could, I don't think I could ever do livestock, man. I Honestly, I think I've got the genetics of hunting and fighting in my blood. There is no way I could farm livestock. It would just be like soul-crushing boredom. Um, and I'm sure it's not, you know, for people who are into that stuff, but True Detective, sorry, I thought it was called True Crime. Yeah, uh, that's the only one I've seen. Another made others, but the, that one was, and David, um, I mean, sorry, Woody Harrison and uh, Matthew McConaughey, really good actors. They act this, these roles out brilliantly. They're really, really good. I think everyone in that show acts really well. So, excellent indeed. Yeah, and not related at all, but um, an actual a Polish show that I watched, I think it was on Netflix when we still had Netflix, was called uh, Ultraviolet, and that was actually a good little show. It's about this chick who uses the internet to catch like criminals, and she's not a cop, and it's quite quite clever how it's done. <laughs> Yeah, Greeny Houdini says, yeah, Kirk, I can see you using the mules as moving targets for fun. <laughs> you know, yeah, I've, I'm just, I'm not a animal husbandry kind of guy, you know. Hunting dog, okay. Horse, if you're going to run out of cars, okay. You know, some snakes, just because you can keep some snakes in the house or pets, I mean, we had all sorts of pets. We had a skunk as a pet, and it was one of the coolest pets. I'll happily have a skunk as a pet. We had, like, lions as pets. No joke, we had little lions as pets, and then when they got big, we, like, gave them back to the lion park. All, all the kind of weird animals you can think of we had as pets, pretty much. We had, it like, pythons, tortoises, you, you name it, crazy roosters. But, like, raise animals to eat them? That just, I don't know, that just seems kind of cool, you know? You go hunting, it's a stranger. You just kill the stranger, you eat him, you honor him by eating him. It's all good. I'm afraid I'm a hunter-gatherer, not a farmer. And if there was no farmers, it's true, there'd be no cities, but it would be a better world. <laughs> the snipe says that in, in Central California, oranges, other citrus, almonds, stone fruits. I don't know what a stone fruit is. I probably do, but I just don't know it by that name. Hey, grapes, lots of different stuff is grown here. Greeny Odini says, you're a rare breed, though. More men should have qualities like you. Well, thank you very much. I'll take that as a compliment. And I kind of agree. It would be a better world if there was more people like me. Q and Bear says, I will have to check Ultraviolet. Didn't know about the existence of good poly series. I'm telling you, it's good. It's really, it's really quite good, and, and I think quite realistic, because it's like, you know, it's this, I, I won't spoil it, but it's like this girl, like her brother was like murdered, and like, so she becomes trying to solve that, and on the way, like by internet friends, they, she uses internet friends, and like, um, one of them is uh, this two sisters that do like um, YouTube videos for like fashion, and like, oh, and this is how you put makeup on. But they're like pretty good on the internet. And then there's another guy who like 
he has another job and he's always on the internet and his wife like you get off the internet you know that sort of thing so they become like a little team almost um but it's very realistic because like people come in and out of it and then there's the cops are like who the fuck are you to solve our crimes kind of thing which is how cops would react you know it's, it's actually a really good show i quite enjoyed it stone fruits or peaches nectarines plums oh okay things that have got a stone in them except for yeah yeah okay got it i didn't i've never heard that term used before oh, yeah oh well or was it somebody that told me that um I think because of all the compliments, somebody said, now, Greeny Houdini is a gamma plant, <laughs> a gamma troll. I don't think so. I like to choose to believe that she's just that pretty lady in the picture. Uh, okay. Oh, what? Oh. Right. Uh, well, this was quite in enjoyable. I didn't realize so many of you were uh, farmers or would-be farmers or half farmers or or you know had uh, cigarette little torpedo mother boats to run the product to the north coast of florida or whatever hey, hey, there's some there's some dread ilk in florida actually some cool the cool guys out there and i think florida is probably the only state in the united states which seems to be somewhat sane <sighs> oh Plus, it's where um, <coughs> where the Apollo mission supposedly took off from. <laughs> I gotta say, there's uh, one of the Dredelcons posted these pictures of one of the supposedly Apollo rockets that's um, I don't know. It's like a it's like a marker on a highway somewhere. They've got this thing, and he took pictures, close up pictures of it, and it's like. I was like, yeah, but that's just like a replica. I said, no, they're saying that this was one of the originals that just they didn't use or whatever. So now they've just put it there as a kind of a monument. And it's just, yeah, that that was not a real rocket. I don't know what that was, but so I don't know. Maybe he's confused. He, he has a lot of strange ideas, that guy, anyway. Uh, a greeny Houdini says, lol, I lived in Florida a Walmart there is like an international psych ward. <laughs> but it is beautiful. So, yeah. <laughs> so I hear, I mean, one of the, the common refrains is like, you know, Florida man, when some weird ass stuff happens. Like this guy, what was it? I think there was some weird story where this guy got stopped for a traffic offense and then he got arrested for having a kilo of cocaine up his butt and it's sort of like how did the police guy discover that this guy had a kilo of cocaine up his butt when he didn't have like a sniffer dog you know, it was just it's one of those florida stories <laughs> and so yeah that's another thing you know there are places in america that like one that still pisses me off was the arizona crater because i went there to like go and like check it out and like because it was like one minute past the time the guy wouldn't let us through because it was like Oh no, if I let you through and you stub your toe, you can sue us. And I was like, just get the fuck out of the way. So like I was fresh out of Africa and this guy was like big, huge, you know, guard. Like it's just a stupid security guard. And I got upset thinking this fucking dumbass American thinks because he's like three times my size, he's going to tell me what the fuck to do. I'm going to, I came all the way here to walk around this fucking crater. I want to see it. And like, dude, I'm going to go out there. And he's like, no, but you can't because, you know, it's past the time. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Just open the door. I'm going to get through you, you know. And he's like, no, but, and, and then I got upset, because like, dude, are you going to move out of this doorway, or am I going to move you out of this doorway, because I want to walk around the thing, and he just like crumbled, you know, he was like a six foot five guy, like literally twice my size, not all muscle, but he wasn't all fat, and like, he just panicked, I just sort of panic in his eyes, no, please, sir, I, please, I'll lose my job, if I let you through that, they'll fire me, I, I, I'm not trying to be difficult, it's just, I can't, you know, that's the rules. And I was like, ah, oh, fuck, this guy's going to fucking cry in a minute. And I go, all right, fucking leave it. But it upset me, you know, because it was one of the places that I wanted to go and check out. And Florida Everglades is another one. Louisiana, just because I want to see. Are those really, those fucking incestuous rednecks really like that? 
some of them has got to be cool though because like i'm sure there's like you know the meth heads and all that but there's got to be some cool rednecks there too and i think there's probably some little southern towns oh another thing i used to watch with one of the ex-wives was um heart of dixie it's a, it's a chick show all right used to watch that mostly because of the ex-wife but it was kind of cute and there's a kind of little rednecks in there and, and it's this little southern town and um, not particularly realistic but it was kind of cute to watch so i think there probably is little towns that are a bit like that so yeah i think yeah the, of the states i wanted to see alaska but now i'm getting on a bit wiser and i've always hated the cold and i've always hated the cold but i thought yeah but i kind of want to check out alaska um so alaska louisiana florida Arizona, I did check out, but I probably have to go back into the fucking crater this time and just dig up a piece of meteorite just to see if it really was there. Uh, and my brother told me that I should go check out Mexico because he went to see the old um, pyramids that are just like lying in the forest there. He says, you know, these fucking Mexicans, they don't even really make it into a tourist spot. They're just like there. It's like people can climb up on them and shit, you know, because it's Mexico. I said, you'd go crazy here, man. There's such a bunch of weird, cool shit. Apart from the Mexicans, of course, but you know, there's always something. Um, so yeah, and in the states, what else? It's, that's probably about it. Florida, Louisiana, maybe Mississippi, just because of the name, I think. Arizona, like, yeah, and oh, I guess Alabama, because it, because it's supposed to be like full-on redneck city, right? Yeah, Alabama. I remember, like, when I was still on Twitter or something. Uh, there was a, you know, followed a couple of random people, and there was, um, you know, I was very single at the time, I think, and uh, there was this, this, uh, what was her, I think her Twitter name was Tater Tots or something, I don't know, anyway, complete southern chick, and she never really posted pictures of herself, but like, once in a while, she'd post a, a sh picture that had her in it, and I'm like, actually, she's hot, and I said, it's, you know, it's, kind of flirted or something and i said something like yeah you know i oh and she posted that's it she posted a picture of her truck and it was like an old fucked up thing with like rust in it but you know she looked hot in it and i said you know that is the perfect redneck chick photograph like a beaten down truck she's hot in like short shorts but not meant to look slutty or anything that's just like how she was dressed in like flip-flops and shorts like yep that's the kind of picture that makes you go like, that's a good woman that you'd want to make her have six kids. <laughs> and she was like, she's, she just laughed about it. She goes, yeah, a guy that says that is probably pretty cool. <laughs> you know, that kind of vibe of the, of the South is what I think I'd enjoy. That sort of thing that I think somehow people are more like down to earth and just reason, you know, in your face sort of thing. Um, uh, oh, let's see, where are we? I've, I've lost a few. Uh, okay. Pew and Bear says, ironic about Florida, because Florida man stories became a meme of totally crazy people doing crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. And David Perkins says, yeah, I'm sure all the dreaded boomers retired to Florida. No, actually, so, some in Alabama, some in Florida, some in some, like, I don't know, copper in states. Or, but I don't know where they all are. Like, one of the cool guys is in Florida. <laughs> yeah, Florida man threw alligator into the burger place. <laughs> Fuck. And Green Houdini said, I, I did have the chance to see the serial killer Ted Bundy's apartment when I was there. In Florida. I didn't realize Ted Bundy was in Florida. Oh, that was one sick fuck. Some harsh Arizona man headlines usually involve swords for some reason. <laughs> oh, thank you for that. I, I always like learning about the geography and culture of a new people. Pure and Bear says Arizona man headline. Oh yeah, he just quoted him. That's pretty based. <laughs> Chad. Base story is the Florida man who ran from the police and hid next to a pond only to get eaten by an alligator. <laughs> How do you get eaten by an alligator? You gotta be pretty weird, stoned, weak or something. 
Florida man mug shots went viral due to this extremely wide neck a few years ago. Yes, I remember that one. Yeah, and Florida man is the monster that Florida used to protect itself from worst monsters. <laughs> Greeny wants to visit Mexico someday. And Pure and Bear says, After I read The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, I also wanted to go to the US to see some of these places. Maybe someday. Oh, the Grand Canyon was another one which I got to see. Uh, but, you know, ideally I'd like to, like, get a kayak and, like, do the Grand Canyon from top to bottom sort of thing. But, um, yeah, I don't know. America's got some beautiful forests, it's got some beautiful geography. It's a pity about the fact that it's a Freemasonic satanic country that spews sewage into the brains of people throughout the planet via their uh, Jewish masters um, and the TV and cinema. Aussie Groper says, John Wayne Gacy was no saint either. Yeah. Yeah, some pretty sick fucks in the States, but then again, Circling back to San Francisco, after I was there a week or two, you know, my brother used to live there and I went to visit him and I was like, after two weeks there, I was like, I now understand why in America you get people to climb a tower and just start to indiscriminately shoot everybody <laughs> because what the hell is wrong with the people in this country? Also, we had never seen things like the Jerry Springer show. In South Africa, there was very limited TV and whatever. So the first time we came across the Jerry Springer show, Montel Williams, even Opera, all that's it's all the same shit. But the Jerry Springer in particular, we like, we gave it a name. Because like my sister and I were there and like we were fascinated for about a day or two. We were like, what is this like car crash TV? What the hell is I, who actually goes on this thing? And is this real? Is it just all fake? Well, what the hell is going on? And we gave it a name. We call it why you fuck my uncle's mother's dog? That's what we gave it. We, you know, we didn't call it um, Jerry Springer. It's like that show, you know, like, why you fuck my uncle's mother's dog? That show. <laughs> That's what we called it. <laughs> just... David Perkins says, Groper's in chat. Let's go. <laughs> go where? Jeffrey, you spelled Jeffrey wrong, Aussie Groper. Jeffrey Dahmer was likewise not a saint. And you spread Saint wrong as well while you're Australian. Plenty of Freemasons throughout Australia, long history, I believe. Well, Australia is the most cucked nation on earth. Uh, I don't know, it's between that and Canada, but I think Australia beats it. And New Zealand. Plus, Aussies are all pricks. Uh, I've only met one Australian I like, and he's the exception to the rule. The rest of you are a bunch of idiots, arrogant pricks that I don't like at all, and they're incompetent, and lying, thieving scum. Yeah, there you go. That's Australia done. And Green Udini says, I don't support our tax dollars supporting Israel. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, you don't have much of a say on it, because most of your Senate is, and all of your media is. People think I'm a loon when I tell them our country is run by Masonic Zionist Satanists. Oh, you're switched on then. Because that's exactly what it is. And uh, I figured it out a long time ago, by the way. This is not a new thing for me. I was uh, saying that over 25 years ago. So, <laughs> Aussie Groper says, Amen. Yes, it is. Most are pricks. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You're okay, Aussie Groper. Well, well done. That's, uh, you've, you've survived the Kurgan Inquisition in initiation anyway. <laughs> We'll see, the full Inquisition is hard to survive. Chad, Southerners are kind of like Afrikaans. I feel right at home in Tennessee. Yeah, Tennessee, I don't know anything about Tennessee, but the name, sort of like, yeah, that, that could also be one of those. Was Tennessee were a film with, um, oh, what's that guy's name? It's called The Electric Mist, I think. And it's the guy who was in No Country for Old Men. The guy who was in Manhunt with um, Harrison Ford, he was the cop in, he usually plays a cop. He was a cop in um, in No Country for Old Men. Oh, what is his name? I'm so bad at names, it's, it's funny. <laughs> 
Now, Greeny Houdini says with German accent, there's dirty Jews in all corners of the earth. I have to spell it Jew because they shadow ban me. <laughs> I think you might have a little German in you, girl. <laughs> Good German don't like the Jews. <laughs> Where are you from? Aren't you friends with Adam Piggott? You know, every man has to bear a cross and Adam is an Australian. I, I, I know Adam. We, we emailed. Um, he's, uh, he's read my books. He's done a review on one of them. He's, uh, he's a cool guy. He's all right, yeah. And uh, I am Venetian, of course. The most civilized people on the face of the earth with the most beautiful city on the face of the earth. Unfortunately, well, we've lost our empire to the vicissitudes of globalization, but if I have anything to say about it, it will be back. If I have enough time in my life, I, I, I'm aiming to become Doge at some point. And Greeny says, oh, you know, I've been searching for truth all my life. And when we find the truth, it makes me want to become this fucking radical anarchist. No, no, no. No, no. What you want to become is a proper Catholic like yours truly. Also known as a deprivationist. That's a word for, you know, people who don't know what a real Catholic is. Tommy Lee Jones. Thank you, Snipe. Snipe is my man for names. I can't post my real thoughts because they show up at my door. I am German. There you go. I knew that you were a good German girl. <laughs> With good German instincts. <laughs> yeah. And the German are a, a funny people. I mean, I worked with Germans for like a year or so, and oh my God, they were a caricature of, of, of a people. I, I can't speak for German women because I don't think I've ever met one. But I, I've, always, I've said this since I worked with Germans, you know, some years ago, quite a few years ago, like 2004 or five or something. And I've said this since I worked with Germans, which is I, I feel true compassion for German women because most of them have to contemplate the act of sexual congress or relationship or possibly even marriage to German men. And I can't think of anything worse. I mean, it's no wonder always the sickest porn is German because, you know, the poor women that do that kind of stuff are used to German men. And, after you've done that, you've, you know, I don't know, do, doing bestiality with pigs or in, in mud is just like a fun day. Truly, German men are some of the most fucking idiotic humans on earth. Having said that, one of the coolest guys I, I met on, I'd say the coolest guy on that whole site was a German guy, but he was East German. But full on German, man. That guy was like, no, this has to be done this way. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what, whether I'm allowed to do it or not. That's what I have to do. And that's what I'm going to do. And it's going to get done that way. And I don't care if I get fired because that is the job. And I was like, I like you, Otto. And he looked like, you know, he was a tall guy who jogged regularly because German, you know. No, no, I have to jog. Three to five kilometers, five kilometers on Wednesday, Tuesday, and Fridays, and three kilometers on Mondays and Sundays, you know, whatever. And I was like, Otto, tell me a bit about yourself. Ah, I'm from East Germany, yeah. I had to escape from East Germany when I was 18. I, I jump over the wall. I, you know, I didn't tell my family anything, of course, because I was like, what, what did your family, you couldn't see them again? Because like, you know, yeah, yeah, of course, I didn't tell them anything because uh, it's only worse for your family if, you, if they know. So I just jumped and uh, ran away to... Uh, West Germany with the uh, few dollars I had in my pockets and uh, clothes on my back and yeah like fucking hell when you were 18 yeah so did you know anybody on the other side no uh, I knew nobody I had no money but uh, you know I it was a bit hard but then I, I was okay now I'm married I have two children a good job it's all good it's like he looked like an accountant tall dude with like round you know little glasses who you think like, ah, he's, he's just like a weak little dude, you know, he's just like a guy. You're like, fucking steal 
mind, you know, <laughs> awesome dude, but yeah, I, uh, um, I, I don't know, I, I truly feel for German women, I, it, it's, you know, of all the whatever dozen of nationalities that I've experienced in the female realm, German was just never one of them, so uh, don't know what to think about them, just, I just feel very sorry for them. Okay, let's see. Alice 16 says, no way Greenie is a German. She hasn't shown the slightest enthusiasm for summer camps yet. <laughs> Aussie Groper says, I love Germans, especially because I'm predominantly German. Also, that is good, yeah? Yeah. And Greenie says, lol, I was sent to summer camps every year. <laughs> I didn't know about the summer camps. I do know about the sandals with socks, though. Wrong thing. Michael Becker says, I find that I developed my intense concentration skills in summer camps when I was a kid. I'm starting to see a pattern here, and I'm thinking Michael Pecker perhaps was not a full chairman, which is why he had to concentrate, to not let the other chairman children put him in a small room with perhaps some kind of smoke, possibly poisonous smoke. Uh, Aussie Groper says, Greeny, was there any chambers with wooden doors and windows? There you go. <laughs> yeah, Michael, with a five-foot stream of snot hanging up my nose. <laughs> Sorry, I can't type. I'm in the sun, can't see much. I did a DNA test. I'm Persian, German, and Cherokee. Wow, that's, uh, if that's a Honest DNA test, you that's interesting. Persian, German, and Cherokee. Is that actually you in the photograph? Could be if if uh, you know if this is real. I could see from the I mean it's hard to tell, it's a very small picture, but could be. Could be Persian. I could see Persian, German, and maybe Cherokee in there. Very interesting mix. I mean, your people, like the Venetians, must have been a bunch of sluts. And they bang everything that moved. Uh, David Perkins, if you think about it, the big bad thing that happened 75 years ago really lacked the German engineering you would have expected. I don't know, the German engineering is very complicated, but yeah, they, um, you know, they, they had mobile gas chambers for like crippled kids. But I've uh, recently been reading this website called Inconvenient History with very well documented and researched articles. And I mean, I've, I've stopped thinking there was any such thing as gas chambers a while back because um, actual factual evidence seems to indicate there wasn't any in the, in the camps. Um, and one of Vox's posts recently, and I've actually ordered the book Stalin's War, because uh, it seems to be correcting quite a few of the things that never made any sense to me about that war. So, yeah. <laughs> Greenie says she thinks that's why she's fast trying to scalp someone. <laughs> okay, the Cherokee part and the German part and, and the Persian part, really. Also, group, are you interested in psychology, Kurgan? Uh, Yes and no, as in, I don't know if you know, but I'm a, I've, uh, I'm a clinical hypnotist. I, uh, yeah, I, I know quite a lot about psychology and I'm interested, I was interested in it only insofar as to figuring out how the human brain works as much as I can and that, that is fascinating. But a lot of psychology is bullshit. Um, hypnosis but hypnosis is not and you can to a certain extent think that a lot of people have been hypnotized about what psychology is or isn't so yeah take that as you will and if you look at my blog you, you'll see there's quite a few articles on that sort of thing uh greenie says i did find out many women in my family back in the day were madams <laughs> you see 
Uh, look, you know, some people are just, or rather some breeds of, of humans are kind of that way, inclined. It's hard to find out family history because my grandmother was adopted. Yeah, it's one thing I suggest to everybody. Try and find out um, as much as you can about your family history because that gives you some roots that it doesn't matter whether you had like good guys or bad guys in your history, but it's important to know. It really is. It's um, it's very important. I And I told the, you know, the lawyer henchmen and that, and they just kind of ignored it. And then I was like, yeah, I'm just going to do a little bit of research. And like, do you realize that your surname has a family crest? And they're like, oh, really? And I, they've probably forgotten it by now, but it's like, look, know where you come from. It's 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 important, you know. It's uh, it's worth knowing. So, but okay, I'll be. Oh, pardon me, I hate yawning on stream. But I am tired. Uh, it's been a very good stream. Uh, thank you all. I think I'm going to say good night. I'll give you guys another minute, as I always do, to ask any weird crazy question you have, whatever you want, fire away, doesn't mean I'll answer you, but I'll, I'll read it, so you, you've got a minute, if you've got some weird, strange, interesting question to ask, go right ahead, and that's the end of my water, so it will also be the end of my stream. Sam Harsha, thanks for the stream and for the info. Gotta go fix a hot water heater. You really are a dirty engineer. Good luck. Hot water heaters are uh, one of those fucking things I don't really want to know anything about. My family name is Rauter. Sounds very German. Why would you call yourself Trini Houdini, though? Houdini was Jewish, and he was an escape artist. Ooh, that sounded like a kid just fell out of bed. Excuse me, think of your questions. Let me go see if my kids are still all alive. Was the wives like <laughs> falling out of bed? Okay. Thanks for streaming. Good night, Kurgan and Immortals. Michael Pecker says, Why? Why what? Good night, Kurgan and Immortals. God bless. All right. Well, thank you all. I uh, really enjoyed it talking with uh, so many farmers that can share my pain. <laughs> Although, you know, I'm sure you guys have probably got it harder than I do because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. All right. Good night and thanks again to all of you.